Welcome. This is my response to Rod Martin's latest video, Global Warming Lie Number 3 Exposed, Global Warming Causes Droughts. Let's see what he has to say in his own words. Claim. Global warming causes droughts. But warming up the planet a few degrees is actually a good thing, making the counterclaim far more true that global warming reduces droughts and deserts. I'm afraid I must take issue with the so-called benefits of global warming. We already know that the weather patterns are changing radically. We have a drop in agricultural production in many parts of the world. There are health issues associated with higher temperatures. Many plants and animals can't adapt fast enough to changing uh, environmental conditions and are going extinct. Plus we also have sea level rise. These do not seem like benefits to me. He then goes on to claim Fact. Land only gets water by warming up the water in the oceans, lakes, rivers, and the land itself. As far as I'm aware, nobody actually disagrees with this. This is called the water cycle or the hydrological cycle and has been known about for a very long time. It was first proposed by Bernard Palissy in 1580, so this is hardly breaking news. Next he says, Fact. Global warming will result in more rain, not less. In fact, the IPCC said exactly that in its most recent report. It states, Anthropogenic influences have contributed to observed increases in atmospheric moisture content in the atmosphere to a global scale changes in precipitation patterns over land and to intensification of heavy precipitation events over land regions. Next he comes up with another statement of the bleeding obvious. Fact. Global warming will result in more snow. Again, the science agrees completely with this. But perhaps he should be passing that message on to some of his global warming denialist buddies who like to show pictures of snowstorms and saying that proves that global warming doesn't exist. Global warming produces more snow in two ways. First of all, because there's more moisture in the air, when it does snow, the snowfall is heavier. But it also increases lake effect snow. Because the temperatures are warmer, not so much of the lakes are frozen, so the winds passing over the lakes pick up more moisture and dump more snow downwind. Now he says something completely ridiculous. Fact. Global warming will slow down sea level rise. Because global warming results in more snow in the polar regions, this will end up taking more water out of the oceans and sequestering some of it on land, in Greenland, Baffin Island, other Arctic islands, and in Antarctica. As you can see from the picture I've posted here, his theory doesn't seem to be working very well in Miami or lots of other coastal towns. If we look at the satellite data, uh, we see no sign of any of this deceleration. In fact, over the last few years, the rate of sea level rise seems to be increasing. Martin's theory would imply that there should be a slow increase in the mass of ice at the Greenland ice sheet. That is not the case. NASA's Gray Satellite measures the amount of ice in that ice cap and we see over the last few years there's been a steady decline. Instead of an increase in the amount of ice in that ice cap, we're actually seeing a decrease of 286 cubic kilometers of ice per year on average. We see a very similar picture in the Antarctic. Although the rate of loss of ice is about half that of the Arctic, nonetheless we see a consistent and long-term downward trend in the total mass of the ice cap there. So again, Martin's theory fails. Next, it becomes completely delusional. If global warming were to continue for several thousand years, it would eventually melt all of the ice and polar regions would then receive only rain and only rarely snow. There would no longer be any accumulation of snow. The alien polar regions would thus become ripe for settlers. Well, let's deal with Greenland first. I suspect that Martin doesn't know that a lot of the central part of Greenland is actually below sea level. And so if all the ice melted, you'd have a vast inland sea surrounded by mountains that are up to 12,000 feet tall. This is hardly areas to be settled. If anything, Antarctica would be worse. It has even higher mountains up to 16,000 feet tall. And if it lost all of its ice, 
it would be just a series of scattered islands. Hardly the sort of thing that you'd want to settle on. And do I need to remind Martin yet again that these polar regions for six months of the year don't see the sun? Next we talk about the Sahara. Fact. The far warmer Holocene Optimum gave us a green Sahara for 3,000 years. Unfortunately he forgets a few very relevant facts, like the Sahara Desert has been there between 4 and 7 million years. He seems to also forget that this so-called Green Sahara didn't represent the whole of the Sahara Desert, just a small part to the west of the desert. The rest of the desert pretty much remained as it is today. Well, let's take a look at the climate optimum and see just how rapid the changes in temperature was. We know from the geological record that this green part of the Sahara changed back to desert very rapidly. Yet if you look at the temperature changes about 7,000 years ago, uh, the changes aren't particularly rapid. There's no rapid cooling and there's no particularly rapid warming. So it doesn't seem to fit his theory at all. So I think his theory can be summarized uh, along the following lines. That if you take a really hot desert and heat it up some more, it's going to turn green. There's a comment earlier in his video that I think sums up this idea perfectly. <laughs> Finally, let's take a look at his conclusions. Conclusion. Global warming makes the planet more wet. As we've seen already, the science agrees with that. There's no problem. However, there's some pieces missing to his jigsaw. He has made a gross assumption here that an increase in atmospheric moisture will mean that rainfall will increase everywhere. It won't. As you can see from this 20th century map of change in precipitation rates, there are a few areas that have got more rainfall, but most areas have got less. So the 20th century data just does not support his assertion. So actually what happens is the pattern of rainfall changes. You get fewer normal types of rainfall, but you get many more uh, heavy precipitation events. So you'll get periods of drought followed by a deluge. So overall, you may get more rain on average but it's coming in a less friendly or usable form for you. So what are the prospects in the long term? Not very bright, I'm afraid. If you look at the potential for drought uh, across the world by the end of this century, most countries have a much higher risk of drought than they do now. A few countries will likely get more rain, but most countries will be drier. This is not a prospect for a prosperous society. I see while I've been producing this video, he's produced yet another one. So it looks as though I'm going to be busy for a while. So until next time, goodbye.